if we want truth and justice to rule our country, then there must be no hypocrisy. In the absence of truth, there is no equality. In the absence of equality, there is no justice. In the absence of justice, there is no peace. In the absence of peace, there is no love. And without love, there can only be darkness. John Deist, Judiciary. It's no longer news that our courts have been turned to a market where injunctions are bought and sold by politicians. Imagine the cartoon where a judge is ringing a bell. Buy your injunctions here, buy your injunctions here, one, one million, one, one million. We are all knowingly killing this country if care is not taken. In a week, PDP obtained three different conflicting interim injunctions from three different courts of coordinate jurisdiction on the same level. One from Port Harcourt, another one from Kebi, and the last one from Calabar, all within one week. Maybe as I talk now, Seth, they go don't go get another one from Sokoto, Benue, and Bauchi State. Yet, minor cases are rehoused in courts for years. Sado, Yorubase Omasheo. This is not to take away the efforts of the hard-working judges, but please, these interim injunctions are becoming questionable and ridiculing the entire effort of the hard-working ones. NJC, please do something. Anyway, someone said, what can even the NJC do when the Supreme Court made a man who came forth in an election governor in Imo State? And neither the state nor the Supreme Court governor has known peace since then. Did it? How about Zafar and Baeza State? The Supreme Court took the people's mandate given at the poll and gave it to PDP that didn't win. And today, the same PDP governor has jumped to APC. Jumpology, you will say. In reverse, the court was used to qualify the op opposition, APC, even before the election. So nobody's left out, even the NJC. Last year, it was the turn of APC to invest injunctions to remove the then chairman of the party, my very loquacious brother, Comrade Adam Soshomole. He didn't know that while he was busy talking, his ward chairman from his village has rushed to Abuja to fish for an interim injunction to remove him from office. And before we knew it, a contrary order emerged from Kano High Court, and today you all know the rest of history. So fear your village people. Mind you, all of this didn't start today. Remember, the 1999, 1993, June 12th general election was annulled via an ex parte order, so it don't take. Of all the various appeals that emanated from the various decisions of the election petition tribunal after the 2015 and 2019 general election, only God knows how many of the decisions were conflicting until the Supreme Court resolved them one way or the other. Some of the judges blame the provisions of paragraph 18.1 of the first schedule of the Electoral Act for these anomalies, even though it shouldn't be an excuse. Also, in 2015, immediately after the general election, we saw the shameless fight for the soul of PDP, aided by the Federal High Court in Port Harcourt, Lagos, and Abuja. While Justice Liman in Port Harcourt issued his order on Monday, Justice Ibrahim Buba of the Lagos Division issued a conflicting order on Tuesday before it subsequently became a one-week, one injunction as Abuja joined the fray until the Supreme Court gave it to former Governor Ahmed Makafi of Kaduna State, even as the Court of Appeal was also serving conflicting orders in election petition. Though for PDP, some people expected the former Governor, President, uh, former President, uh, President Gulog Ebele Jonathan, to use his good luck to settle the crisis in the party, then and now, so that they can give us a credible alternative, a party that gave him so much. Or maybe he is busy settling various crises in Africa. I will land the APC is cutting him to fly their flag come 2023. If the rumor is true, he shouldn't just bother out because the way APC go take disgrace that man, the small credibility when he owns, they won't destroy. After they use Buhari to destroy the entire country. Everything the APC said against him in 2015 will be used against him by PDP, just like they did to Shomole and Izeyamo in Edo State. Oga, I beg you. Remain as other statesman. No let APC use the agree turn you to a stake man. Name one state actually in Nigeria that is not marred by elect conflicting election injunctions from courts of coordinate jurisdiction, aided by senior lawyer once elections are approaching. It became so bad that even the INEC, Independent National Electoral Commission, had to cry out to the Chief Justice of the Federation recently over conflicting judgment served on them in various matters. As I speak, 
almost all the political parties in the forthcoming election in Anambra State are enmeshed in one court case or the other, looking for where to fish for injunction. If these are happening at the highest level, you can imagine the quagmire at the bottom. And mind you, in most cases, lawyers like me are the causes of the laughable rot we have turned the administration of justice in Nigeria into. It is so bad that litigants are no longer confident or comfortable taking their cases to court, and some now resort to self-help. No wonder some highly placed people in government are even proposing amnesty for killers, as they observed that some of these killers might even be set free if tried to court because of the mess we have all put the system into. We say the windmill of justice grinds slowly, but surely. But we forget that justice delayed is justice denied, as we all keep quiet when it benefits us and only complain when it's against us. The judiciary that is supposed to be the last hope of the common man has been torn into the first hope of the politicians against the collective will of the common man. You can't turn the court to a marketplace where judgment and orders are purchased by the highest bidder and expend a sane, so expect a sane society and environment and court on justice, equity, peace, and progress. Nalai, Kolewek, I will therefore advocate that if we must progress as a nation, we must have a judiciary that is ready to look anybody in the face and dispense justice without fear or favor. And to achieve that, we must jettison the idea of nepotism and favoritism in appointment and elevation of members of the bench and appoint com competent and credible hands. Like we say in law, nemo dat quod non habit. You can't give what you don't have. Garbage in, garbage out. The Nigerian Bar Association, MBA, must also be ready to stand its ground and discipline erring lawyers who are used to fi file frivolous lawsuits. The larger society also, you and I, must not only be ready to name and shame people who use public offices for personal benefit, including the judiciary, executive, and legislature, irrespective of party, religion, or tribe, but should equally be ready to vote into public offices, competent and credible people, who will in turn appoint the right people into not just the judiciary, but our various political offices. Failure wish, soon, there might be nowhere for anybody to run to, including the lawyers and judges, because of the absence of justice and equity, anarchy, doom, and insecurity reign supreme. Remember, when a judge sits on trial, the judge is on trial. If you have just clocked it in, like I always say, go and register to vote, because that's the only way you can make a difference. Until next week, for more and previous episodes, follow us on all our social media platforms so showing on your screen. Subscribe, like, share till they hear, and leave a comment. See you next week. Bye-bye.